one world. So friends, first we are going to concentrate on the hand printing techniques. So friends, these hand printing techniques were prevalent in three countries, Korea, Japan and China. So leaving this hand printing techniques uh, aside, first we, concentrate, we are going to concentrate on China. The printing history of China. So, first we are going to see what happened before 594 and after. So, before 594, 8594, there was a system of hand printing in China. But after this date, there came a system of wood block printing. This wood block printing was a system in which the paper was rubbed against wood block ink surfaces. So this uh, provided with the impression on the paper and this was known as the wood block printing. So there was another prevalent term at that time that was known as calligraphy. That was the art of the beautiful and stylish handwriting. So next we are going to concentrate on the bureaucratic system and the imperial state. There was a huge bureaucratic system in China who, which recruited its personnel. That means that the, select, the, the candidates for this position were selected through a civil service examination. The books for this civil service examination were printed under the imperial state. As by the 16th century, the number of candidates appearing for this examination went up. The imperial state had to produce more books. In, according, in accordance to reach the demand. And so the volume of the print also increased. And next we are going to concentrate on the urban culture in China. By the 17th century, urban culture bloomed in China. That means there was urban culture all around. And in, the uses of print diversified. The print was no longer just used by the scholar officials or you know the people sitting in the offices. It was also used by the merchants as they collected trade information in their daily life. It was used by the new readership as, you, as a leisure activity. So reading came to be known as a leisure activity. That means you can do it in your free time. And the new readership preferred different kinds of books. Books on autobiographies, anthologies of masterpieces, literary masterpieces, poetries, narrative plays and romantic plays. So this is what happened during the 17th century when the urban culture bloomed in China. Another good thing which came up was women's involvement in print. So what happened to the women? The rich women began to read. So they used to read not only the scholar officials, the men, the women also began to read. And many women began publishing their plays and their works, their narrative plays. And also the wives of the officials used to print their work and the courtesans used to write about their life. The courtesans used to write about their life. Then the next thing that's going to come in is Shanghai. In the late 19th century, the western print technologies which we use today, a little behind version of that, came into China as the western powers established their outposts in China. So as they came up in, Shanghai became the new hub of the new printing culture and catering to the western type of schools. So it had western type of schools. So Shanghai was a very important feature that time. So here we complete the topic of China and now we are going to concentrate on Japan. What happened in Japan? So friends, now we are going to concentrate on the topic Japan. How did print reach Japan? So the Buddhist monasteries and the Buddhist people, the Buddhists who used to travel, they took the hand printing technology to Japan in around AD 768 to 770. And the first, first Japanese book to be printed was the Diamond Sutra. So the Diamond Sutra contained six pages of um, text and woodcut illustrations. 
And moreover, after this Diamond Sutra, there were pictures printed upon the textiles, the playing cards and the paper money. So there was picture printing. The poetry writers and the prose writers were very famous and were regularly published. And the books were cheap and abundant. So there was, you know, a good sense of poetry and prose among them. And the last thing, and the second last thing that we are going to discuss is that because of the flourish, because of the picture printing, the interesting publishing practices came into being. One of them was the, when the flourishing uh, circles at Edo, which was later to be known as Tokyo, there illustrated paintings. Words were said to be depicting a very elegant urban culture, in, including artisans, courtesans, tea gatherings, and proper etiquette. The libraries and the you know the bookstores there were packed with different kinds of books, from calculations to to books upon women, to tea house gatherings, proper etiquette, and famous places. So this was all about Japan. Here we covered the Edo circles. Edo social circles and what type of books they had, so libraries. And the last topic we covered was how there were different types of books in the libraries and bookstores. So I'm just going to give you, you know, a brief point for this that is libraries and bookstores. Thank you friends for viewing this video if you, and if you want such more videos then you've got to subscribe my channel and thank you very much. And the sequel of this video, uh, this is this completes my first topic of this chapter. And if you want to know more about this chapter, then you got to see other videos in the same series.